Hey guys, can you believe that it's 2024? I feel like it just became 2023, but here we are another year later. I thought this would be the perfect time to kind of look back on the first part of our homeschool year and see how it's gone and what changes we've made and then to update what our plan is for the remainder of the homeschool year. So if you're new here, I'm Christina. I'm a homeschooling and homesteading mom to five children in the Canadian Maritimes. Currently, they're in grades 2, 5, 8, 9, and 11. So I thought I'd just go through and kind of share the changes we've made for each child, and then I'll talk about what's coming up. First, though, we did complete some group work. We finished the what to do when it's not fair. So that is done. We also finished this unit here, Understanding Northern and Central Asia from the Great World Adventure. So when I plan our school year, I plan on around 35 weeks. According to my schedule, we've completed 16 weeks. So we're almost to the halfway point. Now, some of the older children have a little bit more, they kind of go further, but we, we really try to have as much wrapped up in 35 weeks as we can. The last week that we did school before Christmas, honestly, I'm not sure if I can count that as a week. So maybe, maybe we're more like 15 weeks done. We had no internet, which meant a couple children couldn't do certain courses, and we had a lot of sickness. And so by Wednesday, I was like, that's it. I'm calling it. It's Christmas break time. Let's just watch movies and rest and try and get better. So even if we're only 15 weeks in, we're still doing pretty good out of 35. But that's the beauty of homeschool. You can kind of pick and choose how you want to do that and your own schedule. So then for my two youngest children, there really hasn't been anything that's changed or anything that's different. Everything's working pretty well. The only thing I think I mentioned when I did my curriculum video, which I can link up top if you want to go back and watch, was what I was going to do for my child in second grade for science because I only had one notebook for science that I was going to have my older daughter do. I ended up just giving the older book to my son and letting him kind of color and do what he wants in it. The lessons are not the same, so it doesn't match up, but he's still doing a little bit. So that may sound a little confusing, but that's the Apologia um, Zoology. I think it's the first one that they're doing. So then my son in grade eight. So when I talked before about curriculum, he was doing right shop. And I was trying to decide if I was going to have him do one, two, or both levels in one year. And in the end, we decided together that he was going to do both levels in one year. And the reason for that is that his other language arts are the book studies from The Good and the Beautiful. And they're very short and light. He's finished two out of the three he needs to do this year already. So he has very easily been able to do a lesson a week in here and he is I think he has two more lessons and he's done right shop one already and he'll be moving on to right shop two we're not using it kind of as I guess it's intended to be used in terms of a lot of instructor um, like working together he does it on his own I'll share more at the end of the year when I do a review of it but that's what we decided to do and he's been very capable and able to do that easily he can get the two levels done this year. So I think that was the only change with him. So then my child in ninth grade probably has the most changes. So first of all, I was having him do Guest Hollow's Whirlwind History. We had decided to space it out over two years. So he could kind of go a little more in depth and spend a little bit more time on it. But when he started his science, he's doing Apologia's health. I didn't realize that that one was only three days a week. It's not five, like most of their high school courses. So I talked to him and I said, you know what? Why don't you just do the history in one year? It's not like it's a ton and you can very easily do it, get it done. And then you can move on to a different history next year. And so he said, sure. So I think he's caught up to where he should be. Maybe he's a week behind, but he is just going to go ahead and finish that in one year instead of two. He also completed, let's see, Saxon Algebra 1, 
the beginning of November. He took most of the rest of November off from math. And he started the beginning of December with Shorman Algebra 2. And I've talked a little bit about this because we were kind of switching over to Shorman with my oldest son. I feel like Apologia, well, it doesn't have the geometry section. And that's something that's you have to do later on, which is added years, I guess, as opposed to Shorman includes geometry within algebra one and two. And so you can do it over two years instead of three. Also, I really struggle with math. I had a very hard time doing algebra two with my oldest son on paper form, like with Saxon, even with the answer keys. So my plan, if all goes to plan, is once my kids have completed Saxon Algebra half, they will move on to Shorman Algebra one and continue until they're done their high school math. This child had already started Saxon Algebra one. And so I just told him, go ahead and finish it. And then you can start Shorman when you start Algebra two. And so that's what he's done um, again, because our internet was out before Christmas. He's only done a couple weeks of it, but he has moved on to that. He also completed his French, and so he moved on to this book here. Now, it says grade three level, and I have a whole video about these French books, and it's been really interesting because they've been doing French as a second language type books, and now they've moved on to, he's moving on to this, which is French as a first language, and even though it's grade three, it's been hard for him. There's been some things that have been tough. So he's gonna keep working on that. He's not doing this whole book because it has all kinds of topics. It's just the, the French, like the grammar section is what he's doing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does with that through the year. I think that's all the changes for him. I think so. So then moving on to my son in grade 11. Likewise, he also finished his French. And so I think this is the book he chose. Um, I have a few, like I've let them choose. This again is second grade. And this is French as a first language. And this is all like what we would call English. So it's like French language. This is a Quebec program. Uh, so we'll see how he does with that because I really do want their French skills to be at a fairly high level where they can converse and they can um, do written work. I think that's the only thing for him. Yeah, he's, he's not loving the Shorman math. He feels like there's a lot of religious content in there, which he's not a fan of, but he's certainly doing better having someone explain it to him. And we did invest in the calculator the exact one that the instructor uses so he can follow it exactly which I think has been helpful because the one we had last year just didn't quite work right with uh, the book we had but yeah I'll give a full review when he's done that of that course so looking forward to the rest of the school year so we're going to be starting this next what to do when you grumble too much We've been through this once, but it's been a while, and so I thought it was time to do that again. We're also starting our Understanding South America unit, which I'm really excited for. And then things are just kind of as we planned. They're just continuing on. I'm starting to look towards and purchasing curriculum for next year. I'm kind of having a few uncertainties. So I don't know, if you've had a child who has done a course in the grades I'm about to mention, please let me know what you recommend because I'm looking for information. So I'm looking for a language arts curriculum for my son who will be grade 12. The Good and the Beautiful, he's done that all the way through. He is doing the last high school unit, which is level three. They are planning a level four, but it won't be out for a few years. Uh, there's, I know in the States, a lot of people do like, uh, they can go to college and stuff or they do dual enrollment, it doesn't really exist here. And just with the way homeschool is perceived in New Brunswick and stuff, it, it's, it's a tricky thing. So that's probably not gonna be an option for him. So I'm trying to find, I'm looking at maybe um, the gold book, one of the gold books from learning language through 
literature, I think it's called. Um, I'm looking at maybe the Brave Writer College Prep Writing class. If you have suggestions, let me know because I'm feeling a bit lost on that. I think we have most of the rest of his courses for grade 12 sorted out. My son will be in grade 10. <clears throat> he doesn't know what science or what history he wants to do next year. So I'm trying to come up with as many different topics and ideas and curriculum to let him kind of look through and see what he's interested in. So if you have any that you have absolutely loved for high school, let me know. He's already told me he's not interested in physics or chemistry or biology. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and earth science. He's not interested in that either. So give me all your ideas if you have them because I need them. And then also the other one I'm trying to figure out is science for my two youngest children. So grades three and six next year. I had planned to do apology as, I think it's zoology three. It's the land animals. However, um, we've actually done the course before, but I'm just looking at my books. I guess I didn't keep the book. And I think I remember why, because it was kind of a, it was okay, but I didn't really love it. I much prefer Apology as newer books that they're coming out with, and they haven't redone this one yet. So, trying to figure out what to do. Um, I don't really want to do the older course. I might. Mm, doing science with only two children is so different than doing it with like three or four. <laughs> it's just very different. Um, maybe I'll do the Good and the Beautiful's Mammals unit, and then maybe a second unit of something. I don't know, I'm feeling a little lost about science for them for next year. So give me all your suggestions that you can. I would love to hear them on those topics and grades and just send me your ideas. I need them. Yeah, but the rest of the year is kind of going as planned. I do plan to take a week off sometime in the spring. I just kind of play it by ear and see like, is there something going on that we want to go to? Are we going to be going away somewhere? Are the kids feeling ready for a break? Am I, or do we just want to work through it and get to summer a little faster? So we'll see how that goes. I'll just kind of play it by ear. Anyways, hopefully this hasn't been too much rambling because I feel like it's a bit of rambling, just kind of getting what I've been thinking through out there. I do hope to share a video soon about the books we've been reading because read alouds are a very big part of our homeschool and I want to share the ones we've done with you. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the section down below. I always do try and answer every single comment that's left. Let me know, have you guys kind of changed things up a bit or are you still, you're doing your plan from September, everything's going good. I hope that this video finds you having a great day. Take care.